Okay then, hi everyone. Welcome to our final session of the day. It's been a very exciting uh, conference, some really great talks and speakers. So thank you for sticking with us till the end. We've got a great uh, session lined up, playing with blockchain, a conversation with developers pushing the gaming frontier. Obviously we've come across a great, uh, many, many exciting use cases of blockchain throughout the week. And something that a lot of people have touched on already is the impact on digital assets in games and games using blockchain. Um, I'm your host for this uh, very exciting fireside chat this evening, Alex Russman. I'm the head of developer partnerships at a company called Engine. Uh, Engine has a long history in the video gaming space dating back to 2009. But since 2017, we've built, been building a platform allowing game developers to very easily leverage blockchain into their game projects. And I'm joined uh, this evening by Savas from um, uh, Blockpenio and Cindy from Touch Hour Games to talk about the projects that they're working on and the projects that they're integrating engine, um, or blockchain into uh, using the engine platform. Um, so I speak to Cindy and Savas a lot. Uh, so I'm not gonna uh, ask you how you guys are. I think we'll jump right into the meat of the content. Everyone's very excited to hear about these use cases. Uh, one final thing to point out to the audience, please do use the, um, the, the Q&A chat to post your questions um, and uh, all three of us will be uh, trying to get back answers to those questions. Um, so I think we'll kick it right off. Um, I'd like to hear from first Cindy and then Savas, who you are, what is your background, and what are you working on, basically? Let's uh, introduce you to the audience, please. Sure. Well, my name is Cindy Gomez. I'm one of the co-founders of Touch Hour. Um, you could say I was baptized into gaming back in 20, I'm sorry, 2003 when I did vocals for Prince of Persia. And then in 2008, uh, I ended up becoming the first artist because I'm also a singer songwriter, as well as having a, a degree in business from University of Toronto. Uh, I was signed to Interscope and Universal Records. And then in 2008, I got my feet wet in, in the gaming space again where I released my first album on a video game, uh, Street Dancing with Nokia. And that's actually how I met our CEO, Ralph Lemke, who was head of European uh, gaming development. And we had a lot of synergies. And so somehow all these years, we're now, fast forward to today, we're working on uh, two games, Nine Lives Arena and My Ugi. It's a cross-platform gaming experience. Awesome. And over to you, Savas. Uh, hello Alex, uh, thanks for having me today. My name is Savas Lazopoulos, I am uh, the founder of Blopegnio and uh, the creator of the Six Dragons. Um, my experience is in uh, IT department, I'm a, I was an IT manager in the marine uh, time industry. Of course I'm a gamer for over 20 years and uh, so uh, the past few years I have dedicated my tech knowledge and passion for blockchain and gaming to build uh, unique uh, gaming experience. Uh, currently, uh, we are developing our flagship title, The Six Dragons, uh, an open world RPG running on Ethereum network uh, using uh, uh, the engine platform. Wonderful, and how you describe your game in a few, in your, in a few sentences, Savas? What would be your uh, sort of elevator pitch? Uh, so, The Six Dragons is a classic uh, RPG, it has leveling, uh, dungeon crawling, epic boss fights, uh, a huge open world, open classes, crafting, uh, a lot of loot, uh, yeah, it's your go-to RPG experience uh, with blockchain on top. Uh, the Six Dragons started as a single player game, but uh, we are currently moving into a multiplayer environment and uh, we already implemented features that players can interact with each other, uh, such as the blacksmith service, which uh, players can act as blacksmiths and uh, be rewarded. And Cindy, what's, uh, how would you summarize Nine Lives Arena? And I guess also my Ugi very briefly in a few sentences. Right. Sure. Like as, as I mentioned, it's a unique cross-platform gaming experience. So it is the two games. So on the one hand, as you can see, we've got uh, Nine Lives Arena. That's the competitive online RPG. It focuses on the one versus one fantasy player versus player. So you got the magic, swords. You create your own heroes the way you like. And Nine Lives Arena comes with a little tiny helper. Uh, his name is Ugi, and he does all the resource gathering, item crafting. He does this for you 24 seven. 
whether you're online or offline, because you can command him from the mobile app, which is called the My Ugi app, which we're currently developing. And you tell him, hey, can you gather resources, do these kinds of things for me? And uh, he does that for you. But the My Ugi app is also a separate game on its own. So you don't have to necessarily play Nine Lives Arena. You could just play the My Ugi app as well. But basically this companion works in both synchron uh, synchronistically yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i do i do love the oogies they're I, I they're definitely ugly but they're also definitely cute so it's a they're very weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> ugly cute right <laughs> and so so both of you have um you both of you i think that they say are coming from non-blockchain backgrounds how were you introduced to blockchain uh, how do you get excited about it how do you end up using it Starting with uh, you, Cindy, we'll go back and forth. <laughs> um, well, it was about like 2016 and Ralph started telling me about the, you know, blockchain, all that. I'm like, okay, what is this? So he taught me about it. And of course, lo and behold, we invested our own money, <laughs> win some, lose some and uh, up and down. But we, we got our feet wet and it wasn't until I think 2017 or so the ICO came out for engine and that's when we both had like light bulb moment we're like whoa there's something really exciting about this and there's definitely something for gaming here and it wasn't until we went down to the gdc and uh, met the engine team that we were just we chose them because there's obviously a few coins into the gaming space but when we noticed that these guys were gaming veterans and they were super passionate into gaming just like we were we're like these are our people and it's been the best decision we've made. So it was that use case that really, really excited you. We can actually do something with this. Uh, yeah, we can absolutely. Awesome. And what about you, Sabas? Uh, I introduced myself to blockchain uh, in about 2013 with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I really liked how you could move value around without uh, trust a trusted party. Uh, but what clicked it for me is uh, in 2016, as well as CD said, uh, with the Ethereum network and smart contracts, uh, I realized that blockchain is the future and that can really change the way our digital world function across uh, industries. Uh, at the time, I understood that the potential of having blockchain capabilities in the Six Dragons, but uh, it wasn't uh, an option back then. Um, so it's a very nice story because when I saw the engine platform releasing the SDK in the Unity Asset Store, I just grabbed it and spent uh, literally the next uh, 48 hours, uh, no sleep, nothing, trying to create a prototype, a blockchain integration prototype, and it worked. I just posted the video on the engine uh, uh, Telegram group, uh, CTO Vitek uh, just saw it and uh, spoke to me and uh, we, he showcased it in GDC. 2019 and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> well, it's uh, very much falling down the rabbit hole. Um, I think I'd probably say that for you know, both of your companies. I and mean, there's many, many use cases uh, of there's many blockchain use cases being applied in both of your projects. Um, is it possible to give a brief overview of the different ways that blockchain is being integrated in your game? I think this is what the audience will want to hear. You know, you've come along as mainstream game developers you found this blockchain tool that you can sort of use in your projects. Uh, very quick overview, uh, well, not, not too quick, but sort of, can we give an overview of the, the ways you're using blockchain in your games at last? Uh, yes, uh, so we are using blockchain in uh, almost every critical game interaction that uh, depends on digital assets uh, that are owned by our players. Uh, for example, the crafting process of First World is a combination of tokenized materials along with uh, unique recipes, tokenized again, that are stored in blockchain wallets. So whatever we do is linked with smart contracts that enable us to create a provably fair and transparent game economy. Uh, moreover, more than 17% of our items right now in the gaming economy are already blockchain tokens and uh, we're committed to entirely eliminate the use of centralized gaming assets in our game uh, once uh, the blockchain networks allow us to do so. That, that is amazing. It's right, well, right from that first video like, uh, that uh, you described yourself sort of getting lost and then creating. Um, it's, it's a really amazing vision and amazing achievement. Um, and uh, Cindy, some of the a brief overview of the, um, the blockchain use cases in Nine Lives Arena. Sure. Well, for us, it's like just Savas is mentioning, it's really about empowering gamers and giving them the true item ownership. 
So that's why we developed this system, which we call Blueprints. Um, and they're basically crafting recipes that allow players to participate on the monetization of in-game skins. So this is something, I guess, for example, if we take a look at Fortnite, they made a billion dollars selling skins within the first year or so. And these in-game items alone are projected to be about a hundred and eighty nine billion dollar industry by 2025 so there's obviously a lot of money within the vanity items especially in these multiplayer type of games because players want to show off how cool they are just like real life you know why why does a girl go to a you know mom and pop shop versus a gucci or prada because you know they want to look cool right you know you you spend the money on something so it's the same thing in games, especially this, like I mentioned, the multiplayers, you want to show off, oh, look at me, look at my cool gear. But these vanity items don't necessarily, they don't give you actually like special powers because for our game, it's a competitive game. We definitely don't want it to, to give somebody a boost in anything, but it's just to look cool. So we have these blueprints that are either helmets, chest armor, weapons, and the player buys the blueprint and then they can craft uh, as many items based on that particular blueprint to other players and also because we have permadeath in our game when you die you're dead <laughs> um, the market will never actually be saturated so there's always going to be a demand to purchase like just like just like stores in real life right you purchase clothes every season kind of thing right so um, the other use case that we have is um, oogies they're our first cross-platform companion they're to me, they're very exciting NFT characters that grow. They level up over time. Um, they've got a gene pool that allows it for Oogies to have mm, over 3 trillion possible look combinations. And you'll be able to see them in your engine wallet or, you know, yeah, in engine wallet for our case, right? That shows the metadata and that allows players to be able to sell and trade, which to me, that's what blockchain items are all about. I look at it kind of like, a secondhand shop. It's the first time that people are actually able to really own that item because every game that we've all invested in, we've bought things, it just sits there. And after a while, you don't actually, you know, you played it, you had fun, but that's it. It doesn't go anywhere. But now that you can actually own it, it's in your wallet, you can actually use it and either make some money back from what you spent or who knows, it might become some super rare collectible, just like real toys like Cabbage Patch dolls and um, you know all these kind of toys over time, there might be a, a rare limited amount and then you actually might make some money. So it's very and interesting. That's, that, that's something um, for, for the audience, if you've missed that uh, subtlety in the title, in Nine Lives Arena, the players have nine lives. You, you, you lose uh, nine matches against uh, other players in the PvP arena and you're dead forever and your, uh, I guess your reward is that all of your achievements up to that point, all of your victories, your stats, your collective gear, your cosmetic items are sort of uh, uh, turned into a statue that's a blockchain item and uh, that becomes its own sort of collectible NFT. Um, so but I'd like to kind of just ask a bit more about how do the Oogies fit into this and how does a player benefit from them being NFT items? So you die, your character is gone forever, apart from this, sort of, this statue, this achievement, which yeah. is very cool. Um, what, what do you then do? Do you start from the beginning again? Um, how, does, how does it work with the Oogies? Well, the, the Oogies are separate. So the Oogies level up, the Oogies don't die. That's only your hero that dies. So the Oogie will always level up. And as I said, it's, you see the metadata within um, the actual, the, the engine wallet, right? Or, and also within the game you see. So he comes with, say for example, anger issues, immune system, luck, and that will always be leveling up. That does not, the Oogie does not go down in levels. So just your hero, when he dies, the slot opens up, but you've actually, you can build your hero quite rapidly. We don't have it where it's like a long period of time because that would be boring and that would suck. <laughs> you can do it rather quickly and um, you've already learned. You've already learned from the last time you played. Hmm, I, I, cause because you build your character in our game, you think, I like this a little bit more. I want to use these spells as opposed to this one. And I think this is going to get me to be on the leaderboards and be, you know, the most, the top rated gamer in this particular game. So basically your character dies, but you still have your, your level 60 Ugi, um, who can quickly build you up to a, you know, a strong character again. And I guess the benefit is that if you, if you want to kind of supercharge that process, you can go out and buy an Ugi that someone else has trained up. 
because right. they, they can trade it to you over the blockchain. That, that's, that's really exciting. It's like, and uh, like you say, there's just two parts, there was two games to engage in. You can have people who are just in the arena fighting and people who are just training up Ugi's as uh, basically you know, Tamagotchi fans meet your hardcore PvP fans. Correct. Uh, and another thing I could mention is that um, because when you die, you're like your permadad, you get the your hero becomes a statue to show off how many victories he had. So let's say, for example, you're a Twitch streamer. This could be quite exciting when everyone's on pins and needles watching him like, oh, my God, he's going to die or what's going to happen? He, this might be it. And so then you, you think, OK, well, as a Twitch streamer, I can now give this amazing thing. I've got X amount of victories. My statue can become an, a reward. And that statue is blockchain based so that you can transfer it to people. Um, and so that's another a unique way of also providing something to gamers and to communities within gaming. Well, while the, the Ukis are doing the crafting, uh, a, lot, a lot of the hard effort in, in Nine Lives Arena, Sabas, over in uh, the Six Dragons, you've actually set up a, a blockchain, uh, well, a blacksmith service using these recipes you have on the blockchain and players are you know, crafting, they're finding the recipes. Can you uh, explain to our uh, sort of, uh, audience a bit more about the, the blockchain aspects of that economy? Um, yes. so I find that fascinating. Yes, uh, let me start by saying that uh, crafting is a feature that uh, can be found in almost every RPG game. Uh, but uh, with blockchain, what uh, we do is truly game-changing. Uh, by decentralizing all the key elements of this uh, process, we practically shift the dynamics of the game in favor of gamers. Uh, we don't control what is created, who owns the items, and obviously we can't change the rules. The game is fair for all. Uh, in addition, using blockchain, uh, all our players know precisely how many game items are available, uh, when they were created and who crafted uh, the, the item. So you can craft an item and uh, your name is engraved in it forever, uh, which can make you a well-known blacksmith that uh, others use to craft their items with the blacksmith uh, service uh, that you just mentioned. Uh, also, all the items so, yes. so I could have, uh, so there could be loads and loads of Rustman items out there and people will say, oh, I, I, I killed that dragon with a Rustman. I could make myself a, a famous blacksmith name. Uh, yes, yes, because you, people know that you have that recipe and can use your service to create that item uh, by paying a fee to you. So also I have to mention that uh, all the items have dynamic stats embedded in the asset itself. Uh, that can be verified uh, on the public uh, ledger. And in contrast, uh, we target the men of, uh, of games uh, that they want the very powerful weapons. So the items have uh, dynamic stats that are created uh, on the blockchain. Uh, so the, blocks, uh, the blockchain black, blacksmith service, it's in short uh, that we allow players that call blockchain recipes in their wallet uh, to craft new blockchain items for other players and get paid in uh, cryptocurrency for their service. So one player brings the blockchain materials and the other one brings uh, the blockchain recipe. Uh, the trade uh, happens through a smart contract in the game menu seamlessly so players can transact very quickly without uh, having to know or trust each other. Uh, features like this, in uh, my opinion, can change the role of uh, traditional gaming as we know it. Uh, you can't do that in uh, traditional gaming without blockchain. Uh, so the game progress is connected with the real uh, world value. There's no way to achieve these things without blockchain, in my opinion. No, that, that's, that's amazing. I have to say to anyone who hasn't seen The Six Dragons, uh, look at the videos online. This, this real time, like chanting and crafting of items on the blockchain is, is really fantastic. Um, and your, your team also producing some really great blog content going into sort of more of the detail, Zabas. But I'm, as a player, turning up at a, at a sort of smithy point. And if you don't have the recipe, seeing if another um, player is, you know, perhaps you're putting their recipe out to be used for a fee and then creating this item, you're paying all the fees, having it created and crafted and receiving it in your blockchain wallet is, is really amazing. It is, it is kind of like looking into the future of the gameplay experience. And you know, right from that first uh, video that was shown at GDC, um, it's been a huge exciting concept that you are, you're bringing to reality. Um, and I, yeah, I, I definitely get carried away about this. You've got a big open alpha um, going on that's just launched. You have a very active community who's very engaged with the project. 
Um, what are the things that they're loving about it? What, what are the sort of things that they're playing with, enjoying the most, giving the best feedback on? Uh, yeah, of course, crafting and chanting, uh, they love it. Uh, but I think uh, our gamers really love uh, the opportunity to hold in their blockchain wallets all these uh, game items, uh, their progress, progress, and in a way, their time spent in the game, uh, they hold it there. Uh, moreover, the idea that gamers can make a profit from uh, their game achievements is definitely an attractive an attractive uh, narrative. Play, uh, uh, play to earn is an exciting concept and uh, we're trying to integrate it into our game. Uh, however, our uh, priority remains to design a great gaming experience first and uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, after all, the Six Dragons was created as a traditional game and blockchain came after. Mm. And that, that's, uh, that really shows through. I mean, uh, well, I have to say I did die very quickly in the forest on my first try as a <laughs> by black spider or something so it's it's a challenging game as as is uh, nine lives arena and cindy you uh, you have a very active community i think i spoke to to ralph before and i think it's now when when he jumps into the game i think he he doesn't survive very long <laughs> uh, there's always a match to be found and there your, your community really understand the game um and provide a lot of enjoyment there what, what are the features that they're enjoying the most giving the best feedback on because clearly there's always a community in there engaged with everything. Well, they obviously they love the, you know, the fighting and the, the competitiveness, getting on the leaderboards to see who's better than the other. So there's some people who spent over a thousand hours, um, you know, and it's, it just keeps going up. And, but they really love the blueprints. They, they love the fact that they can trade with each other. They're very unique and rare that they know that in future, if they hold on to them, they'll be able to craft and then, you know, they can become the crafters and make money off of that in future to sell to other people that are looking not to buy the blueprint, but just, you know, one particular item. So that in-game monetization, as Savas mentioned, that's that's a really big plus for everyone. And I think that's very unique. And that's one of the reasons we really love blockchain. Um, they also really love the Oogies. Right now we've got this little competition like a, on, on the leaderboard for specifically Oogies where they can level them up to level 60. So people are, you know, ah, I want to be there first. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. Yeah, they are these, yeah, these like little collectible pets. I, I still need to actually train up uh, mine. Um, <laughs> I, need to, I need to work out to do that. They're very ugly, but I love them as uh, pieces. Yeah. I think definitely one of one of the takeaways for me is it's this degree of personalization, whether it's the cosmetics you mentioned or Sabas, the, the personalization of these, you know, highly powerful sort of items you have. Um, for in terms of mainstream gamers coming to your game, Sabas, you mentioned that this started off as a game that you then pulled blockchain elements into. For mainstream gamers, what's going to be innovative for them? What's going to attract um, them to your game? Uh, yeah, the, this is a very nice question. Uh... I truly believe that uh, gaming can be a gateway for blockchain adoption as a whole, since it makes uh, so much sense uh, to use it with blockchain. Uh, people can just start playing game, a game and get introduced to blockchain and uh, they, they don't even know it and they use blockchain. So at this point right now, uh, that real games like The Six Dragons, Live, Live, uh, Nine Lives Arena, Age of Rust and many others can attract these mainstream gamers for their gameplay, graphics, and everything a mainstream gamers, uh, gamer wants from a game. And all of this with uh, blockchain capabilities on top. Uh, so as games kind of picked in graphics and frames and everything right now, I really believe that uh, true next-gen gaming will be about blockchain because it offers unique experiences not possible without it. I have to agree with that, and I, I think you probably agree with that, Cindy. Uh, <laughs> Um, which aspects do you think are going to be innovative and exciting for mainstream gamers who are thinking, oh, hardcore PvP, that's my kind of thing. Oh, these are, these are things I haven't come across. What's going to get them most excited and drawn in? Uh, to me, really, it's, it's really just the main thing is that true item ownership. The fact that you own it. It's not in a game. It's yours. And you can sell it. You can trade it. That, to me, is like by far the the most exciting thing like like Savas mentioned um just like like him ours is we thought of it it's we developed a game first and then oh wow look we can put all these cool things and it's just going to create you know something really exciting for gamers that they've never had the opportunity to to use before and just like Savas you don't need to actually know anything about blockchain. That's the beauty about these games. You need to know nothing whatsoever. So the average 
gamer out there that might not know about bitcoins or all these different kinds of coins and stuff, they can just say, okay, let me play a game. I'm having fun. But then as you get involved into the communities, the community will teach you, hey, by the way, did you know if you have this item that you could later craft it and sell it and all these kind of things. So there's a beautiful learning curve within the communities and for gamers as well. And as you know, gamers typically tend to be on the leading edge of technology. They end up adopting technology, then the rest of the world kind of follows, right? <laughs> I think... and. Looking then at the sort of broader game industry, I mean, you are both um, you're pioneers and you're doing some brand new things with your projects. What are what are some of the areas of friction that still exist for, for gamers and for any game developers who are, who are watching this? What are what are the good parts? What is actually working very well? So perhaps uh, what are some of the piece of friction that needs to be worked on for bringing in these mainstream gamers? I guess for any sort of blockchain developers uh, watching and for any game developers watching, what is what is working really well for you? Uh, if we can maybe start with uh, Sabas. Uh, yeah, well, true ownership, uh, it's a very, very important part of the game and uh, with the platforms like Engine that uh, you can use the API and create uh, all these things without having to interact with uh, smart contracts right away. But in my opinion, uh, for blockchain games to reach the so-called mainstream players, uh, we need to have a friction mainly related to scalability of blockchain networks and users' uh, experience uh, right now. But this is an issue that blockchains are uh, fixing right now uh, and will play a major role in the whole adoption. Right. I think so that it's... Ethereum Network 2.0 might fix that and the affinity that with Engine is also going to really help with scalability on those it's just it's the wild wild west days basically right we're all we're all learning and you know at the same time but we know that there's something really big for gaming here well it's, it's really exciting that despite the, the friction that does exist for for game developers and as you say for the game is the, the sort of scalability issues that one comes up against um that you know, there's something still so enjoyable and working it, it does work um and it's only going to be improved as those as those solutions are introduced um, for, for game developers, is, is there anything, um, if, if they want to sort of start working with blockchain, is now the time? Or, I, I, I'm assuming, <laughs> assuming it is, um, based on your, your experiences, but um, yeah, any, any reassuring words for them if they're a bit nervous about getting involved with this, uh, what seems to them brand new technology? Well, I would say like for us, we don't really deal with the smart contracts and that's why we really love the engine platform because, you know, it's a plug and play. Like if we'll, we're perfectly, we're on uh, Unreal Engine 4. I know that other games are on Unreal, uh, Unity and, and you guys already have a whole, uh, de an actual developer's app for Unity and it's just literally plug and play. A little bit of a, obviously there's a learning curve and everything, but it's not uh, so massive and, and it's not that hard, guys. It's really cool. It's it's honestly it's going to be one of the best things cuz once once you give I personally think that the future is these in-game microtransactions. That's where the future of a blockchain for gaming specifically is going to go. And once a player understands, wait a minute, I am buying something but I'm not really getting anything out of it, that's going to change the whole the whole thing. As I was, you're in, in Unity, um, I've, Engine does provide an SDK for the Unity game engine. Um, and but I, I, th I think you've also done, done a lot of hands-on work yourself, um, working outside of it as well. Um, yes. and, uh, <laughs> has that been a steep learning curve for you? Uh, as I said in the beginning, it took me two days to make the prototype. But uh, let's be honest, uh, after this, this is a prototype, then you have to create your own systems, uh, use uh, the graphic well of uh, engine. Uh, but uh, yeah, the experience is pretty fine right now. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we bet big on the disruptive effect of blockchain uh, in our lives in, gen in general. Uh, so, yes, I believe uh, developers should uh, download the SDK and start experimenting and they will find their, their road to what they need to do later. And we, we all agree that blockchain is definitely the future for the video games industry. Is there any particular uh, application you're super, super excited to see at scale, used by everyone or something really sort of different in the games industry coming in the future? Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, I mean, uh, as I said, uh, gaming is a huge uh, industry. So if uh, we start using uh, blockchain in gaming, I believe adoption will come as a whole. So yes, this is uh, what I'm uh, I'm trying to do as a developer to bring players uh, into blockchain. Well, that's I think we can all agree that's a very very noble effort and really exciting. It's that you're the gateway to a whole new sort of a whole new world of blockchain. We had a whole conference, a whole week of exciting talks about your know, use case around this technology. So if gaming can introduce people to that world, then it's not just the, uh, I forget, 64 square kilometers of uh, how big it is? Yes, double, uh, double balance Skyrim. <laughs> double the size of Skyrim in the Six Dragons. And Cindy, what are you, uh, what are you excited to see in, if we fast forward a few years? Yeah, being being part of this whole brand new wave of adoption for blockchain, I think it's pretty cool. Being part of, uh, I guess, the pack that's helping lead the change in a way is exciting. I'm excited for the next bull run. <laughs> I'm excited for Engine to launch uh, Infinity, and they're also going to be launching, I know, an Unreal SDK. So there's a lot of exciting things coming up, and it just it feels really good to be part of it and to to be able to provide that um, monetization of the skins for gamers. That's pretty unique and different. That's never been done before. And to be able to, for people to trade safely, because it's been many times in the past, people would trade an item and either the person just, how do you trade it? Because there's no, there's no way to trade something. So people would get ripped off. And so that's pretty neat that you can trade and not have to worry about, oh my God, where did my money go? Who's got my money? Um, that's neat. So all these kind of little small details that we, I guess, take for granted now that we know all about blockchain and we use it, but uh, it's very exciting. Well, we're down to our last few, uh, last few minutes. So I, it's I mean, a pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure speaking to you all the time. I'm, I'm in the very, I'm a very enviable position of getting to talk to a community over, of over 30 game developers to get of game developers and projects you know working with blockchain through the engine platform but it's always a pleasure to talk to you both and catch up on nine lives arena and six dragons i think we should really end on your know, call to action for the audience who are probably very, very excited about your games how do they get involved i mean cindy you've got a closed alpha for nine lives arena going on but is is there any way for people to what's the Absolutely. best way to follow progress get involved get excited get their hands on Ugi, something like that Absolutely. There's still space in the closed alpha, so you can check us out at www.ninelivesarena.com um, and you'll be able to subscribe to a newsletter there if you like to find out new information of when the open alpha comes out, then the beta. Um, and of course, you can grab Oogies, check out our store and be part of the community. And actually, the community is pretty neat. We're very lucky. We've got a really nice community that's really helpful. And so they'll help you understand what blockchain, how it works in gaming and it might pique your interest. So check it out and Savas you uh I think the open alpha is is the obvious move here <laughs> yes uh, you can log in in the six dragons.com and uh, press play now and play on our open alpha and everything you listened uh, here it's playable right now in uh, mainnet in the fairy mainnet in engine mainnet and you can start crafting and chanting uh, renting your services as a blacksmith and uh, go die by the spiders like you did. <laughs> I'll never live that down. It's like the fishing in my life, Serena. I just can't do that properly. Um, I, I, I'm skillful in many thing, digital things, but not, uh, not those two activities. But no, I have to say, jump into the games. Uh, I've had the pleasure to enjoy these both for a long time, but each additional update is hugely, hugely exciting. It feels like you're living through history. Um, they're really great games themselves. The blockchain applications are, are really, really awesome. Um, I, yeah, I can't encourage everyone watching to look at these games, interact with these games as much as possible. It's really the, the future going forward. I think if you're keen on blockchain, you should be excited for you know, the use cases and the adoption coming. And if you're outside of blockchain, you're a game developer, look at these projects. They're really leading the way. Uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, well, thank you, Samus. Thank you, Cindy, for your time. Um, thank you very much, Alex. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening in. And uh, will any, any questions missing, we'll try and get uh, answers to those in the chat as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you.